Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dennis Duke Oniala. Just in case you're new, please make it a point to subscribe because I have a lot in stock for you. Now, my other channel is called Gossip Uganda. Go and like it. I've left the link in the description. Now, today, it's not the usual gossip that I usually do. And uh, that's why you see I've even put on this t-shirt called uh, Visit Uganda. It's something I'm thinking of doing. Now, I have a gentleman. Uh, his name is Pat Larry. He deals or he has been very influential in terms or when it comes to albinism in Uganda uh, trying to create awareness. But well, I will not speak for him or I will not speak on his behalf because he is right here in the building just to speak to us. Welcome onto my channel. Thank you. This is literally like a television station because Thank you're going you. to be watched by at least uh, 20,000 people right now as we speak. Yeah, sure. So just briefly introduce yourself and what exactly you do. Uh, my, my name is Pat Robert Larobi. I do uh, advocacy on albinism mm -hmm. and most of my work is focused towards inclusion of people with disability in all settings in the community. When you talk about, uh, when you talk about uh, inclusion, what exactly do you mean? Are they not included? Um, we, we have had a, a bit of challenge mm -hmm. because in our society sometimes you see people with albinism still face stigma. People, people think they are not strong, they cannot work, they are not like any other human being. But we are saying no, people with albinism are people like you and me, but we just need to give them a chance. And that chance is including them in our systems, including them in our jobs, our society, and also realizing that they are people. And then that is the inclusion we are trying to talk about. Okay, uh, the fact that you are now engaged in trying to help these people, uh, let's start from what are the challenges that so far, I'm very sure you've interacted with a number of them. What are some of the challenges that you've able to, you know, uh, observe? Um, one is uh, the biggest challenge we are looking at is skin cancer. Because the people with albinism lack the melanin which helps to build in their color of the skin, most of them are prone to skin cancer. And for a country like Uganda where the sun is really very hot, that means the body is too overly exposed to the sun, so the risk is very high. Like this year alone, we have lost like about five members of our association. That is one. Two, uh, people with albinism have varying sight issues. Others are long, others are short. Others see in normal conditions, others don't see. Now, most of the time, the learning becomes a problem. And that's why you see, if a kid with albinism sits behind in a classroom, then definitely that one is not going to see. Some of them will walk closer to the blackboard. And if you ever see somebody with albinism reading, even on phone, they really have to put the phone close so that they can see. Now all those are challenges. Um, the other big challenge which I have personally encountered are the, the different stories I listen to. Uh, women with albinism, being raped by men saying well, one when you sleep with a woman with albinism mm. you get cured of hiv aids mm. or if you're living with aids when you sleep with an albinism you chances are high that you get healed now these are violations of rights uh, basically those are like um, cultural beliefs those, those are superstition mm. the myth mm. the untrue things about albinism mm. and, and and we find these are some of the challenges you've had in tanzania for example People with albinism are being killed for riches that they bring money. But who in, among us does not know that these are actually the poor of the poorest? They, they don't have the money themselves. The families are living in absolute poverty. So how would you expect them to have money when actually them themselves are living in poverty? They would start the deal by themselves. Say, so, okay, if it is messy, okay, now I have somebody with albinism, then that's the money. But why is it that it doesn't happen? Yeah, so those are the challenges that I've, I've encountered. But also the biggest, biggest, biggest challenge is the ignorance. People don't know. Like, like people just do not know how to deal with them. Uh, do they look at them like uh, different beings from a different, you know, continent? What exactly is, is uh, do, like, just briefly explain to us. Uh, the ignorance is every time people say which continent the people with albinism come from. Mm -hmm. I was in Kenya and I posted a picture of mine with about 20 persons with albinism. And somebody said, hey, which country are you in? 
Ah, like they can't, they don't believe that <laughs> such people are also in Africa? And I tell them, <clears throat> albinism is a global thing. Any person can produce a person with albinism. Just, just before we go there, uh, how do a person give birth to an albinism? What, what causes albinism, really? Uh, is it a gene difference? What exactly is that? Um, because some people in Africa, we take it as a curse. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Mm. And, and that's also a challenge. Mm. Because uh, when somebody produces a kid with albinism, mm. they'll hide them in the house, mm. saying, you've produced a curse. It's a demon in the family. It's a snake. They have all these kind of names that people attach to them. But the truth that we need to know, we, you and me know science, that when a man and a woman comes together, there's going to be an, in a relationship, and in a relationship, a child is born. But for one to produce a child with albinism, the man must be carrying the, the gene of okay, so albinism. It it's a genetic like, like genetic problem, like family background, something like that. Like Actually, in my, fa for example, in my family, we don't have an albinism. But and then um, the, uh, I'm chance, just thinking. Now you might not be having albinism, but if you have the gene in you, and you meet with a woman who also carries a gene with albinism, chances are high that you are producing a kid with it albinism so it's, it's not a family thing it's a genetical thing someone would think or be out there and be like okay can i avoid giving birth on albinism are there chances or we should just embrace the fact that they are albinism they are also people and we can give birth to them as well uh in advanced countries if you're going to if a woman is pregnant mm. you can detect that the kid going to be produced is an albin mm. and, and and you know the the, the transmission of albinism is equivalent to sickle cells. The, how would somebody get sickle cells? You relate that I am a sickler, I meet a sickler, then definitely chances are high that you're going to produce a what? A sickler. But I can also tell you, it's very rare for a person with albinism to produce a black kid, to produce a, a, kid, a kid with albinism. All of them will produce black kids. I, I beg your pardon on that. Like an albinism, mm. Uh, there are limited chances of them actually giving birth to fellow albinism yes. than it is with the blacks. With the blacks. Ah. Because the blacks might be, ru I might be running away from Sherry, Sheila, Princess, wherever. Mm. Sherry might not have the gene of albinism, mm. but I have it. And then if I meet with Shakira, who also has the gene but does mm. not know, mm. then the two black people are going to produce a kid ah, with okay. albinism. And yet, you find that the person with albinism might necessarily not be having... Oh, okay, the way you, you, you're, you're putting your, your things, like, mm. it's not like the way I had introduced, like, albinism. Like, for us, albinism is like a person. So it's not the person, it's just somebody with albinism. Exactly. Like, like it's some sort of a condition. Albinism is a condition. Mm -hmm. You see, when I'm describing Dennis Duke Wanyala, mm -hmm. I, I have to appreciate the fact that there's beyond I, I can't say that journalist recognize the person first the person is Dennis Wanyala the deal albinism is just a condition that is why it is abusive when you say an albino albino is an abuse albino is like nothing you know something just there Terming them yes by what they are. exactly so that's why we are saying somebody with albinism, a person with albinism, because it's a condition which is just there. And that does not change the fact of your humanity. And, and, and this is something that we're trying to tell people. So the, it's, we're saying give humanity a face first before you think of the labels. Are there chances of us, you know, um, uh, creating a lot of awareness in our communities uh, for people to understand that, hey, irrespective of what they are they are people uh, they also need to be observed in society uh, they need to be included are there chances of us seeing that happening in our country but also across as you go about your job i think having hosting me here is one of the greatest platform it's one big contribution people when people think about contributions towards a cause they'll think in terms of money but also giving us a platform where there's a voice to an action is already enough to tell people. Imagine 20 people watching us now come and realize or learn how albinism is caused 
how albinism spread and also getting access to get first-hand information because the biggest challenge I've told you is there's insufficient information on albinism and when we come to forums like this and tell them the truth about albinism we are only helping change one life at a time and and there's so many advocacy we we've done uh, mr and miss albinism east africa to break the myth we have done the, um, the online street we call them splash dance get 10 people with albinism take them wherever in the street just throw them there and they have fun dance people stop watch them and say the more you see them the more you realize they are there and the more you realize they have the ability we we are releasing a film that we seen them in acting art is taking over the saying everyone loves to dance and listen to music and watch movies so like on my side we are producing a film it's called the invisible fathers still it has issues of albinism curated by people with albinism and all these are advocacies programs in all these advocacy programs that you have mentioned where is government um, most of the time it has been a single solo journey and all what we're doing now is to prove to government individually we have done it and if they come on board we can even do better the biggest thing I told you with the albinism is the cancer thing we told the government you Duke and Pat need lotion for their skin those are cosmetics are they in Uganda or your shop or you ship from? but again people with albinism don't need those lotions people with albinism need sunscreen sunscreen to a person with albinism is like Panadol which you get in a clinic for them it is like medicine for their skin because it protects them from the, the sun but the challenge is where do they get them they are nowhere to be seen second thing they're very expensive a tube goes for about 80,000 shillings. Ugandan money. money. You can't even find. And no, what we do is we are relying on well wishers. Every time you have donors giving you, or you have these white friends who have come in, maybe they are going back, they donate. These are insufficient support. And we are telling government, please, come put this uh, sunscreen as a basic requirement. Just like you can provide Panadol, Seprin, and all these medications for the other diseases in the hospital. Simply get tubes that will be given free to people with albinism, and this way you will be saving the next human resource for the country. Nonetheless, uh, I think that is it from us, but before we actually wind it up, I would love him to mention some of the channels that if somebody is watching and would love to support the works that you guys do, maybe how do they find you? Um, for those who are watching, I think we have one biggest channel right now which is causing a lot of uh, debates on albinism in Africa. It's called uh, Pats Journal, which is, uh, you can find us on www.patsjournal.com and you can Google. And not forgetting here the channel, the YouTube. Thing. Nonetheless, I am uh, going to leave uh, his simple contacts in the description as well, and also leave the link to the part journal that he has been talking about. My name is Dennis Wonyala. Well, I told you and I promised you that I will leave no story, uh, you know, untold. I will definitely tell all the stories as they happen. And today we've been discussing issues to do with albinism or people living with albinism. Apparently today I've been corrected that it's not actually an albino, but it's a person living with albinism or people living with albinism. And therefore, we'll have to end this today. Until then, it's a goodbye from us.